Summertime temperatures and the roller coaster that is COVID-19 has a lot of us in the motorcycle world turning the track days and club racing as a way of getting out of the house and deep into some two-wheel fun. Choosing the right tire, size, compound, and pressure during the soaring summer temperatures can lead to all sorts of contradictory advice from well-meaning but ill-informed armchair experts. We went into the Motorcycle.com video vault and pulled out this interview with Metzler and Pirelli's Motorcycle Racing Manager of the Americas, Oscar Solis, to get the real intel on how to get the most out of your tires at the racetrack. The interview took place during the Arma Vintage Motorcycle Fest at Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama, while Moe's video content producer Sean Matich and Moe's road test editor Troy Siahan were racing and testing for a couple of features. Hey guys, I'm with Oscar Solis, road race manager for Metzler and Pirelli Tire. Correct. Uh, first off, we want to do a big thank you to Metzler. Uh, out of all our sponsors, and they've all helped us out immensely, but you guys went over and above, you know, basically saying, what do you guys need? Sure, um, it's our pleasure. It's also been a good learning experience for me because I don't actually have a lot of experience on the racetrack with Metzler tires, and we were all really, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised, I guess I didn't know what to expect. You know, myself, I didn't think of Metzler so much as a race brand, you know, more as a road brand. Right. But these tires, the three tracks, four tracks we've been to, have all had exceptional grip. Great. So uh, Glad you're impressed. So I'm glad to hear that. It's good. So once again, thank you for providing. Um, Absolutely. We brought you over here today just to help, you know, educate the consumer a little bit about the product as well as help dissolve some of the myths about proper setup, pressure, compound, that kind of a thing. So why don't we right. just jump right into it. Uh, okay. Here we have an example of the, this is the tire that I was running for practice. This is the Racetech RR, Yes. the K1 compound. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about the sure. background of this tire. Yeah, this is uh, Mrs. Metzler's Race DOT line. So it's Racetech RR. Comes in several compounds in the front. Uh, it's got the K1, K2 front. It actually has a K0, K1, K2, and also like a more of a street K3 compound for the rear. Used all over the world. It's a very versatile tire and a very good uh, tire to have on the race track. Pirelli owns Messer, correct? Correct. And where are the tires manufactured? In the same factory? Yeah, so Pirelli Superbike, all the race product for Pirelli Superbike, Supercorsa, and such is, is uh, in a manufacturing plant just outside of Freiburg, Germany. Now Metzler is actually on the same line uh, that those tires are built on, so they're built on the same line. However, the methodology and, and what we want to use the, di the different brands for are, are different, for sure. You know, the Pirelli lineup is, uh, is a very ultra-high performing lineup, um, you know, World Superbike, very, very precise. And the Metzler is very popular with the road racing, like the true road racing, Isle of Man and such. And, uh, it's more of a, a muscle brand where it's very versatile and it has a lot of uh, a lot of uses for the tires. So that's kind of the different methodologies of, of the different brands. And like we were talking about last night, you could think of Pirelli as a, a fine glass of white wine, and your Metzler is just your your bottle of beer and just you know this the, the good old tire. If you own a World Superbike uh, team and you want to do a World Superbike uh, riding, okay, fine. Maybe the Pirelli is uh, the better tire, the better brand for it, but. For, for us normal people, Metzler is a great tire. And uh, as far as longevity, the Metzlers tend to last a little longer? They tend to last a little bit longer. Yeah, they, they do. All right, now, as I was showing the, the tire, I, I picked up the old shag one. Um, right. One of the things we were impressed with was the durability of the Metzler. Until we got to Barber, right. and as you can see, so can you talk a little bit about what was going on here? And I do want to first thing say that once we put a fresh tire on my bike, and my tire was already used, we had run it at the, the previous round. But we ran it here for practice, but I think it already had some time at Fontana. Yep. We started to see some of this wearing. Right. So what was going on here, and why did that not become yeah. present when we put a fresh tire on the bike? So what happens usually, if a guy gets off their bike, and they look at the tire, and, and they see this, they're like, what's wrong with my tire, right? And it's, it's not, there's really nothing wrong with the tire, like you said, you go to three different places, the tire looks great, and then you come to Barber, and this is this is the result after the first couple of sessions. Barber is different now. Barber got repaved about seven weeks ago. So now it's a new pavement. It's, it's, it's really abrasive. And also, it, you could actually put more force into the track and to the bike because it's, that, that abrasiveness actually goes to uh, a little bit more grip. So you go around the turn a little bit faster. 
And so it puts different forces on the tire and it's different kind of wear and such. So obviously you can talk to the guy, whoever's at the track or, you know, call, uh, email us, kind of show us some pictures. But what happens is that, you know, you could do some things to the tire and make it a little bit better. In, in this case here at Barber, since the, there's a little bit more force, we've, we're recommending going up high spring rate, go up in pressure a little bit, make it, I want to call it artificially durable. So a little bit more, more uh, handling of, of the weight that's going on it and keep that follow effect and, and, and let that uh, go away with the, the pressure. And then also you could do some stuff with the clickers, turn your rebound in, slow down that massive amount of force that you got going on to the bike that this pavement now allows you to have. And I'm glad you mentioned pressure. Uh, what are we doing with compounds in relation to temperature of the track surface? Yeah, so that, that's a good question. So there's, a, the, the question I get a lot is, hey, you know, what compound should I be at what temperature, right? And I wish that was a cut and dry answer. It really depends on what bike you're riding, like an IT, or what track you're at, or how fast you are. So there's a lot of variables that come into play. Now, saying in general, so cold, Basically, you want to go with a, a harder tire on the rear, and that's because the harder tire is made to be used at a colder temperature. You know, what happens is if you got a little bit of surface tearing, that's because the tire gets cold on the surface, and that's where the tearing actually initiates from. It's like colder rubber is more like a plastic than it is a rubber, to be honest. And so that tearing comes from the, the rigidness of the rubber. So you want a harder on the rear, and, and alternatively, you actually want a softer on the front. Um, the, the softer front, the, the contact patch on the front is much smaller than on the rear. So all that force is really concentrated there, right? So, so you want to have a lot of that, that, that stickiness and, and what's going on with, with the tire because you don't have the horsepower that's really flowing into there. You just want something that's going to handle the pressure that's going on there and not really slide on on you when, when you, when you go uh, into the turn. So warm temperatures, you want to climb a little bit more. We'll, we'll say K1, you know, broader range. It, it actually is the broadest range where it goes to the cold a little bit more, into the hot a little bit more. That's going to be your, your medium spec right there, medium compound. The front, you could either stay with the softer, you could try to dabble into the harder. And, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more now. When we go to the hotter uh, temperature ranges, you, you want the, the softest compound that you could actually get. As long as it's not Jennings GP or Talladega, where it's a really abrasive track, you kind of want to probably stay with the harder stuff because that abrasiveness is really going to tear the softer compound. But those tires, the softer compound tires, are made to be at a higher temperature range. Uh, and, and as the track, as it gets a little bit warmer, it actually loses a little bit of grip, so, so that softer compound is going to kick in and kind of give you a better safety net for that aspect. Now the front, like I was saying, the contact patch is way smaller. You, you tend to overheat those little small areas a little bit more because it's uh, just not as, as much force, but on that smaller contact patch. So the front kind of gets a little wallowy going like this. It kind of just kind of feels like it squirms on you. You get that harder compound in the front, it goes away. You get the good stiffness feeling that you had at when you were with the softer compound and it's cold. Pressure is actually a byproduct of temperature. The more important thing is to be in the temperature range that you need to be for that application, right? Pressure gets you there. But that's the end goal is to make sure you're in that temperature range. That's what's really going to give you the good feeling and get you where you want to be. Pressure flexion is one that actually creates the heat, right? And so as long as you create that heat, that tire's going to be in temperature range, you're going to smile all the way through the track. If something's off there, then of course you got to look at the pressure. If you're too high, you know, it's going to have a rough feeling. It's not really going to get that temperature range you need to be in because if it's too high, it can't deflect and actually create the, the heat. And obviously, conversely, when you, when you go lower, it's going to want to follow a little bit, not feel so good, uh, and it's going to be a little harder to tire, and you're not going to feel as good. It's, it's, you, don't, you don't really, it's really hard to overheat a race tire. It's really hard to overheat one, unless you're in Daytona, Phillip Island, places that are pretty special. Um, so that's usually never a major issue. It, it's, it's having that feeling there and having the temperature range where you need to be uh, for your application. So, so I know, again, it's, uh, I just gave you a it depends answer. Um, but again, experience comes into play. Make sure when you're coming off the track, check your pressures. You don't want too much of a rise. You don't want to lose any pressure. Anything above or below two PSI, something's wrong. So that's what—that's actually what I was going to ask you. So let's say off the warmers, we set our target pressure, our recommended pressure. You come in and the rear went down two pounds. Right. What, what does that tell you as a rider and what's so the reaction? If it went down two pounds, that means you're at a higher temperature and you lost that temperature on the track, right? So that's what allowed the pressure to come down. It's, it's a direct relationship. So, 
So obviously you're going out too hot and you're, you're cooling it down there. Either, I hate to say it like this, either you really need to speed up on the track and deflect the tire more, put more force in that tire, or honestly, you just need to go down a PSI so that way the track flexes more and gets the deflection and the temperature stays the same as you went out. So the lower the temperature in the tire, the more heat you're allowing it to generate, the right. higher the temperature, yep. the less heat and the more durability or if you're running in, in yeah, extra yeah, hot conditions like we were so. saying earlier. Yep. I mean, if you think about it, you know, big truckers that are on the highway, they always have to have the pressures up on the tires or they, they blow out, right? Take that same methodology, put it into your race bike, and, and, and hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of how that's a correlation. Fantastic. Well, that's a little bit with Oscar from Metzler Pirelli about tires. Uh, we got to get ready to go racing again. Absolutely. Once again, thank you for the support and uh, thanks for, for breaking it down. I feel a little bit more informed now, the, the mysteries of tire setup. Yes. So, Absolutely. One. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.